Introduction The earth is made up of three components, land, air and water. These components are interdependent and sustain life on the earth. Together, these three merge to make the biosphere or the zone of life. The term realm means sphere or an area of specific dimensions. The four main realms of the earth are lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere and biosphere. Lithosphere The outermost solid layer of the earth is called the lithosphere. It is also called the crust of the earth. This realm consists of the large land masses of the continents and the huge water bodies called the oceans. It is here that we find mountains, plateaus and plains. We also find life, plants, animals and humans. It has a soil layer that allows plants to grow. Resources like oil, gas and minerals are also found here. The lithosphere consists of two types of crusts, continental and oceanic. The continental crust runs below the continent. It is the upper crust and is also called seal which is made up of silica and alumina. Its thickness varies between 40 and 100 km. It is thicker under the mountains. The oceanic crust is the lower crust and is found below the oceans, as well as under the sea hall. It is also called sema, as it is made up of silica and magnesium. It is much thinner with an average thickness of just 6 km. The level of seawater remains the same everywhere. For example, 3200 meter above sea level means that the elevation of land is measured from the level of the sea, which is taken as zero. Continents Formation of the continents Continents make up the landmass of the lithosphere. Plate tectonics may explain why we have continents. Scientists believe that all the continents were once joined together as one major landmass or giant supercontinent called Pangaea. When the lithosphere broke apart, Pangaea also split into different continents. There is evidence to support this theory. For example, the eastern coast of South America and the western coast of Africa look like they would fit together even though they are separated by an ocean. Similar animals and plants are found in both the regions. Fossils of the same reptiles have been found in both South America and Africa. There are seven continents in all. Most of these lie in the Northern Hemisphere. Asia, the world's largest continent, covers one-third of the Earth's total land surface and is surrounded by the Arctic Ocean in the north the Indian Ocean in the south and the Pacific Ocean in the east. It has the highest mountains and the lowest points in the world. Some of the world's longest rivers such as the Yangs, Euphrates, Indus and Ganga as well as deserts such as Gobi and Thar are in Asia. It also has the highest population among all the continents, ancient civilizations of the Indus Valley, China and Mesopotamia thrive here. This continent lies in the Eastern Hemisphere. Africa is the second largest continent in the world, covering about one-fifth of the Earth's land surface. The continent is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean in the west and the Indian Ocean in the east. Africa is joined to Asia by the Isthmus of Suez. Most of Africa is a vast plateau with the Atlas Mountains in the northwest and the Cape Ranges in the south. It has the world's largest hot desert, the Sahara Desert. The equator or zero degree latitude runs almost through the middle of the continent. A large part of the continent lies in the northern hemisphere. North America is the third largest continent in the world. It is surrounded by the Arctic Ocean in the north, the Atlantic Ocean in the east and the Pacific Ocean in the south and west. North and South America are joined by the Isthmus of Panama. It also has the second longest coastline of 60,000 km. Some of the major rivers in this continent are Mississippi, Mackenzie, Red 
Yukon and Lawrence. The Great Lakes in North America is the largest group of freshwater lakes on the earth. The world's most striking canyon in the world, the Grand Canyon, is located in North America. This continent lies in the Western Hemisphere. South America is the fourth largest continent in the world, covering one-eighth of the Earth's land surface. It is bounded by the Pacific Ocean on the west and the Atlantic Ocean on the north and east. South America has the largest river basin in the world, drained by the Amazon River. Paraguay, Uruguay and Orinoco are the other major rivers. The Andes, world's longest mountain range, runs through the north to south. South America lies mostly in the southern hemisphere. Europe is the second smallest continent, covering about one-fifteenth of the Earth's land surface. It forms a continuous landmass with Asia, and together the two continents are called Eurasia. It is bounded by the Arctic Ocean in the north, the Atlantic Ocean in the west, the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea in the south. It has a very irregular coastline, which extends to 38,000 km and is marked by bays and yards. Europe is also marked by thousands of lakes in Finland. Norway and Sweden. The Rhine, Rhone, Danube, Volga, Dnieper, and Thames are some of the major rivers here. The Arctic Circle passes through it. This continent lies mostly in the Western Hemisphere. Antarctic is the fifth largest continent. It is almost entirely covered by huge sheets of ice. It lies in a circular pattern around the South Pole with an average elevation of 2,195 meter. It is the world's highest continent. Nearly 95% of the continent is covered by ice and snow, so no one really knows what lies underneath the thick sheet of ice. Due to this reason, the only forms of life are land plants and animals that have adapted to the extremely cold climate of this continent. There are no permanent human settlements in Antarctica. It lies completely in the southern hemisphere. Australia is the only continent, the smallest, that is also a country, the sixth largest. It is surrounded on all sides by oceans and seas and is also known as the island continent. Australia is marked by low relief and aridity. The major rivers of the continent are Murray, Darling, Flinders and Swan. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the most remarkable relief features of Australia. It is composed of corals. It lies entirely in the southern hemisphere. Hydrosphere, oceans. All forms of water on our earth form the hydrosphere. So, the oceans, seas, lakes, rivers, streams, waterfalls, water vapor in the air, glaciers, ice and snow are all part of the hydrosphere. There seems to be more water than land. This is the reason the earth is called a blue planet. More than 71% of the earth is covered with water and 29% is land. How many oceans do we have? It is actually one body of water that has been named differently at different places. All oceans merge into each other. Nearly 95% of all water is in the oceans and seas and it is salty. Only 5% is available as fresh water, apart from the four major oceans, the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian and Arctic. Many geographers call the water surrounding Antarctica as the Southern Ocean. It is the place where the waters of the Pacific, Atlantic and Indian Oceans merge. The Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean in the world. It covers one-third of the Earth's surface. Its area is larger than the entire landmass of the Earth. It has double the volume of water than that of the Atlantic. The average depth is about 4,267 meter.
The Atlantic Ocean is the second largest ocean covering one fifth of the Earth's surface. It separates Europe and Africa from North America and South America. The average depth of this ocean is about 3330 meter. It is S-shaped. It has a highly indented coastline thereby resulting in natural harbors and ports. The Indian Ocean is the third largest ocean covering one seventh of the Earth's surface. The average depth of the Indian Ocean is about 3890 meter. It is the only ocean named after a country, India. It is triangular in shape. The Arctic Ocean is the smallest of all the oceans and encircles the North Pole. It is surrounded by North America and Eurasia and has an ice cover. Its average depth is about 1,988 meter. It is connected with the Pacific Ocean by Bering Strait, which is a narrow stretch of shallow water. Atmosphere It is the atmosphere that makes our Earth unique. It is the blanket of air that surrounds the Earth. The air is a mix of gases such as nitrogen 78%, oxygen 21%, carbon dioxide 0.6% etc. Living organisms breathe in oxygen from the air and breathe out carbon dioxide into the air. The atmosphere also protects us from the harmful rays of the sun. Besides, plants take their supply of carbon dioxide and nitrogen for photosynthesis from the atmosphere. We get some water supply in the form of rain and snow from the water vapor present in the atmosphere. Structure The atmosphere extends up to a height of about 1600 kilometers. The atmosphere can be divided into five layers. There is a thin buffer zone between each two layers. Troposphere is the lowest layer with clouds and all the weather occurrences such as storms. Here the temperature decreases with height. The troposphere extends from the surface of the earth to an altitude varying from up to 17 km. Stratosphere is the region with the ozone layer which absorbs the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun and prevents them from reaching us. Temperature increases with height in this layer. The stratosphere extends from the troposphere to altitudes ranging from 17 km to 50 km above sea level. Mesosphere, the third layer, sees a decrease in temperature with an increase in altitude. Ice crystal clouds are found here. It extends from the stratosphere to around 80 km above sea level. Thermosphere is a very hot layer where the temperature of the gases are extremely high. Exosphere is the outermost limit of our atmosphere. Here, the atmosphere merges into space. Biosphere This realm includes all forms of life on Earth. Biosphere is the zone where all the other three spheres, land, water and air meet. We find life forms on the surface of the Earth's crust within a few kilometers of the lower atmosphere and even deep in the oceans. It supports between 5 to 30 million species of plants, animals and other small organisms. In the oceans or hydrosphere, life is dependent on the dissolved nutrients in water and air from the atmosphere. There is also an interaction between the living organisms and non-living things. All elements in the biosphere interact with each other to create an ecosystem. Living organisms such as plants and animals interact with each other and with the physical elements of the environment where they live.